This is Greg. Greg is an artificial intelligence agent that is currently stuck in a 10 by 10 room and he will have to learn not only how to survive by avoiding the falling burning cubes, but also how to escape his prison in just 60 seconds. His goal is to collect the golden block, which will lower the walls, thus opening his way to freedom. Well, kinda. Once awakened, Greg was profoundly confused by everything happening around him, hectically running across the room, trying to figure out what the hell he is supposed to do in order to escape his imprisonment. Soon enough, he got his first clue in form of a molten cube to the head. But as any medical treatment, you cannot stop after just one session. So in round two, he was prescribed yet another smack to the head. These procedures seemed to work quite well, since round three was his first round where he managed to successfully survive for the entire episode duration. I mean, he was still minecrafted at the end, duh, but at least there were no cubes involved this time. And before you call me cruel for the way I teach, or as some would say, torture this AI, check out how efficient my approach proved to be. It took our lab rat only 4 rounds until he managed to complete the first level by collecting the cube and escaping. But you did not think it will be that easy, did you? Greg will need to complete 5 levels of increasing difficulty if he actually wants to be free. In level 2, he will have to collect 10 cubes instead of just one. Unfortunately for Greg, the learning process is rather punishing, where each mistake results in a very strong headache, but luckily for you, that doesn't have to be the case, thanks to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Rather than only learning boring theory, each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play and mess around with the concepts and helps you build understanding from the ground up. All content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers and researchers from well-known places like Stanford, MIT, Microsoft and Google. Are you as bad at memorizing stuff as I am? Well, Brilliant has got you covered, helping you build one of the most important skills in science, critical thinking, through practice and active problem solving. Brilliant's short and concise lessons allow you to learn without spending too much of your precious time, and you can do that literally from anywhere, right from your phone. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash zuzeloops or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So if you'd like to support me and my channel, consider checking it out. And now let's get back to Greg and see how he handles the second level of our simulation. At start, our boy Greg, seemingly forgetting everything he learned on the first level, is extremely confused of the situation he woke up in and spends most of his time exploring and figuring out the environment. That's when he doesn't get smacked in the head by a burning cube, of course. As weird as it might sound, this is actually beneficial for Greg. Just like a kid, the best way of teaching him useful life lessons is by smacking him in the head with a searing hot block of magma. And in this case, the life lesson is that getting smacked in the head with a searing hot block of magma is bad for your health. And as a proof that it actually works, on round 2 our boy manages to collect his first two golden blocks, which now also give him an idea about the rewards available in the simulation. His loneliness starts kicking in and the next 25 rounds he spends mostly hugging the walls. Whatever floats our boat, my dude. But then, starting with round 27, it seems Greg understood the idea more or less, swiftly dodging the falling cubes and managing to collect a total of 4 golden blocks in one run. 
returns back to his beloved walls for some extra hugs, but instead of receiving the love he craves so much, it results in another head concussion. With each consecutive attempt, Greg is getting better and better at finding and gathering the golden blocks. But he keeps returning to one of the corners in a desperate attempt to find safety, but safety is nowhere to be found. On round 42, however, our Dum Dum manages to collect a total of 7 blocks, beating his previous record before going back to his favorite corner to spend his last seconds alive. Sure, a huge chunk of it was thanks to sheer luck, since the blocks were spawning in close proximity, but hey, don't you dare undermine my boy's success, that's my job. Let's now fast forward some more, a bit more, almost there, here, round 73, after picking up a golden block, he picks another, then one more. And another one. And another, another one. one. And yet another one. One more, then two more blocks, clearing 90% of the challenge and marking the first time on this level when he can actually see the outside of his prison. Unfortunately, he runs out of time on his way to the last remaining block. You were so close, my dude. And he must have felt that breeze of freedom as well, because check this out. I'm not sure what happened here and how by picking up a block it was considered as 2, but my best assumption is that after picking block number 9, block number 10 got spawned in the same position, resulting in Greg picking it up immediately and unlocking his way to Liberty. Well, if Liberty is the third level of this prison-like simulation, lol. This time, the blocks will not immediately disappear on collision. Instead, they will stay on the ground for 5 seconds, posing a continuous threat as well as obstructing Greg's vision, resulting in a much more challenging environment. At least so I thought. After getting spawned right next to the first block, this guy turns into a gold miner, gathering one golden block after another without a glimmer of hesitation. He flawlessly avoids every single falling block, as well as the blocks on the ground and successfully lowers the walls, unlocking his path to level 4 in just one try. Very impressive, my dude. On level 4, however, Greg's selfishness will result in his demise. Not only he will have to dodge the falling cubes himself, but also make sure this blue cube stays intact. If it gets damaged by a burning block, it will result in a loss, but luckily for him, there is this conveniently placed roof, under which the blue box should be safe. While this strategy might seem obvious for us, Greg will have to figure this all by himself. As you can see, he got lucky enough for the blue cube to be spawned right underneath the safety roof, which actually made me worried he might complete this level from the first try as well. He managed to collect all 10 golden blocks and headed directly for the exit, but he ran out of time a few inches away from safety. Can you imagine how painful that must feel, being this close to success and failing literally in the last second? Well, I couldn't care less, so let's continue. Round 2, Greg decides to once again focus on gathering the golden cubes, while completely ignoring his other responsibility which resulted in the blue block being hit, thus making Greg lose. I told you, selfishness will not work, my boy. On round 3, as always in my projects, the AI somehow managed to break the freaking simulation. After collecting 4 golden cubes without issues, the fifth one got spawned in the same place where the blue block was located. When Greg attempted to pick it up, the blue block simply vanished. Mmm, yeah, my assumption is that the collision broke and the blue cube got moved somewhere underneath the map, though. So, fortunately enough, for me at least, I did not have to deal with the dilemma whether this counts as fair play or not, because he ran out of time before collecting all 10 golden cubes, and ended up losing the round. 
on round 4, we can see the first time Greg actually seemed to care about the blue block, moving it from a dangerous position underneath the safety roof. But this act of kindness didn't help our boy too much, because a few moments later, after successfully forgetting all of his prior training, he stumbled right into a magma block on the floor. Oh, you little dum-dum. Round 5 made me question how correct it was to allow the block to spawn underneath the safety roof, because that's exactly what happened again. After a few quick readjustments by Greg here and there, he managed to focus on lowering the wall and escaping his prison once again, but he won't be able to rely on luck in the final level, right? This is the last and most difficult challenge. In level 5, not only the safety roof has been fully removed, but the amount of falling cubes has been doubled as well. Considering he did not have a proper lesson about selfishness on the previous level, Greg tries to rely on all tactics of ignoring the blue cube and focusing on gathering the gold ones as quick as possible, but this time it doesn't seem to work, does it? After a few failed attempts, on round 4 he finally decides to stop ignoring the blue cube and move it closer to the edge of the map. I'm not sure what his strategy is, but at least he's trying something new. Despite kinda protecting the cube and not getting hit himself, Greg ran out of time before making any decent progress. We can see a similar approach the very next round, but this time he did not push the cube hard enough and one of the falling cubes managed to scratch the corners of the blue block, resulting in another failed attempt. At this point, it seems Greg mostly abandoned the idea of trying to move the blue block and decided to go back to his selfish strategy of hoping the blue block is not getting hit while he tries to collect the golden blocks as quick as possible. Honestly, I think the best strategy would be to try and keep the blue block as close as possible so he has time to move it out of danger if needed. However, on round 10, his approach almost worked as well. He got 9 out of 10 golden blocks, but almost is not enough, is it? For the next few dozen rounds, Greg employed a whole array of different strategy, desperately trying to find the most efficient ones, mainly relying on pushing the blue block to the edges of the map and then focusing on collecting as many gold cubes as possible. This seems to work pretty good. I'm not entirely sure why, since the magma blocks are spawned randomly, so there shouldn't really be a difference where the blue block is located. But hey, if it works for Greg, it works for me. And eventually, after 152 rounds of suffering with the blue block secured at the upper edge of the map, Greg managed to swiftly avoid a whole bunch of magma blocks and collected all 10 gold cubes, earning his way to freedom from this hell, this time for real. Congrats, my boy! I knew you could do it! Greg managed to complete all 5 challenges and escape, and in case you were wondering where the hell do those falling blocks even come from, well, they are summoned by the Cult of Penguins, who also happen to be my Patreon subscribers. Your support is what allows me to create these brain rot videos, so thank you, you are the legends. Now, while you wait for the next project, you might want to check out this other video I made, where AI musketeers fight two hordes of AI warriors in an epic massive battle. Bye!